Hello, everybody. Welcome to Reiki One class. Organizational things. Uh, let's make every hour, let's make a bathroom break for like five minutes. I will do first two hours, and Jim will do the second two hours. Uh, uh, the structure of the class is we have uh, Reiki goes in uh, four levels. Traditionally, Usui Reiki. Uh, the traditional classical Reiki, which is spread over the West, everybody calls just Reiki. It is four levels. Level one uh, introduces you to Reiki, makes you a healer. So you graduate from level one, you're already a healer. And you can practice on your friends, you know, whoever volunteers to be treated, but you're not supposed to charge money. You can accept donations, but you're not supposed to charge money. And level two basically gives you the right uh, to charge money and explains how Reiki practitioners uh, do their business. So it's more like business introduction. And also you get, cup, you get additional symbols. In level one you get a symbol, in level two you get additional symbols. Level three is for practitioners who kind of practiced and then after you got the first experience with people uh, level 3 allows you gives you additional symbol and explains all the details about you know all varieties of Reiki all varieties of how you can do it basically expand to uh, you know maximum what what can be trained in, in standard course and level 4 is is teaching so now in addition to doing things you will be taught how to teach others and that's very simple simple it's very simplified um, you know for massage course do you know how long does it take you know hundreds, hundreds of hours thousands of hours right for massage me, yeah um, I have 625 six, um, six, for California you need 250 for California you need 250 hours for Reiki uh, level one is eight hours. Level two is, I think, eight hours. Level three is eight hours. Level four is eight hours, plus minus a little bit. So it's it's a uh, order of magnitude less. Um, it's very simplified, and the reason it is simplified is uh, we work with the spirit. So in the Reiki, you just I introduce to the spirit, and then the spirit does the rest of the work, and it works wonderfully. In the first class we taught um, just the introduction to the spirit was sufficient. People picked up from there. Basically there is a lot of intelligence on the side so people are basically being helped. They're being guided to the class and then they're being guided after the class. So we just do that initiation. It's the whole class of initiation and that's and that's about it. Aha. Uh -huh. I wanted to say that um, my portion of the class, the second half, I'm going to use David as a guinea pig to show the hand positions and things of this nature so you could practice for a week. And uh, then when we come back the second week, for the second four hours, you'll at least have some ideas of, uh, have some practice and know what you're doing a little bit with the hand positions. Thank you, absolutely. And David, I would like to interview you when I have a chance later. Absolutely, I would love that. Wonderful, thank you. I actually only live a few hours from you. Ah, okay, so that, that helps. All right. Um, today we do four hours, and uh, next week, Sunday, we do another four hours. If you can't make it next Sunday, we'll have to watch the recording, I guess. And I think we'll repeat the same class 
again soon uh, same class so um, you know all students from from the first class are welcome to join for free the second class all right um, also if you miss the attunement we'll have to give you a you can get a personal attunement if you are not able to get it from the first class or you had to miss a class so if you let me know or let Max know we can get together and do attunements for you you don't have to be here next week to get that attunement but we'd like to uh, make sure you get it yes absolutely yeah I did a couple of attunements of, of you know between the classes and it's fun and so did I. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing attunements all the time. Some for Reiki and some for other things. Yeah, by the way, the other things. The class is called Galactic Reiki. And we give you two electronic certificates. One for Usui Reiki, which is classical. And Galactic Reiki is something which we add. Basically, it is based on what we learn from our aliens. You know, it was fun when Jim started channeling aliens. He started channeling their... Reiki too. When you say I, you know, when you, when I complain to the aliens and something hurts, they say, "How about we do some Reiki on you?" And this way we, we, um, we started learning uh, alien Reiki as a patient. I learned Usui Reiki as a patient and alien Reiki as a patient, and it's fun. So we will hmm. share the basics of alien Reiki with you. And when I say alien, it's more like transdimensional high dimensional shamanic mystical it's all the same stuff it's all the same stuff reiki is universal it's um it's just an energy healing art there is lots of different forms of energy healing art and reiki is the most simplified the most modernized the easiest to pass over so the first thing you just realize that you are a healer and that's it just realization that you are a healer is is uh, I would say the most profound um, I will possibly run a little um, just say a couple of words about yourself I just wonder what level of healing you are are you already practicing healing are you a healer and um, and and that's it. I, I you know we have so many people. If we do introductions full way, it would take an hour. So you seem to be already knowledgeable about chakras. You are a healer, right? Uh, no, I'm a beginner with healing, but I have I have I have studied. I've been studying it. Now I'm what what, what modality do you do? Well, it, it is Reiki. Okay, but. wonderful. So um, I guess the question is not are you a healer. The answer to are you a healer? Everyone is a healer, right? Oh, okay. If you survived. To this age, you're already a healer. You healed yourself, right? <laughs> right, right? So the question is, are you already in healing arts? Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. what, what, what do you do? Uh, massage therapy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And you? Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I, I actually work with um, Archangel Michael. Uh -huh. or Sorry, Archangel Raphael on um, healing. So I do hands-on healing. Um, but my guides have just been teaching me. So <laughs> I haven't been formally trained but um, yeah my guides have all right all when, right. Do, when you do you speak, speak, what's your what's healing, your healing modality? Modality? um I've actually been instinctively uh, doing the healing the hand healing just through my spirit guides um, once I began speaking the galactic languages um, I feel like I've just instinctively started using the languages along with my hand um, you know along with the the hand energy so mm -hmm. it's really the same thing. I've just been doing it instinctively with my guides, and because I've been doing it on the colonies, I just feel like I just kind of know what to do when I'm here. And I worked mm -hmm. on my husband's knee last night. He's having a knee issue, so I was excited. I told him after my class today, I want to I want to work on him again because he's having a hard time. And he said it helped him a lot last night. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Jim, if you're there, you can uh, share your um, um, healing. How long have you been a healer? I don't know. Jim, possibly. Yeah. Now I'm here. Uh, uh -huh. I've been a healer now since 2012. Mm -hmm. um, I started just by going to Reiki classes 
to get healings for myself because I uh, we're readjusting the 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 thing for the bed here. But um, I went to Reiki after I lost my job just to get calm and pacified after I lost my job and realized that as I was uh, being healed I could feel the energy of other people and I, even with my eyes closed I could tell that their energies were where they were in the room so um, discovered a couple months later when I started to actually want to help them do some Reiki healing that I was a natural Reiki healer and had been a shaman in many lifetimes so um, one of the ladies did some readings and was like, whoa, okay. So um, so that's how I started my Reiki healing. I, I just was, uh, I loved doing it, and it was, the energy flowed really well, and people were really helped, and I, I feel very blessed about that. Who was your first teacher uh, in this Robin, lifetime? Robin Welsh. Robin and Welsh was was my first teacher, yes. Oh, Robin, yes. How is she? Um, she's doing better. She did uh -huh. have a lot of health issues uh, after Reiki. After I did Reiki 2 with her, she ended up in the hospital because mm -hmm. she had uh, many uh, other issues that, uh, <laughs> but nobody, she never asked for any healing, so we went to the hospital and helped her heal there. So, mm -hmm. so, you must teacher. She's one that uh, uh, taught me Reiki 1 and Reiki 2, uh, and then Barbara Carlton taught me Reiki 3 and Reiki 4. So, Yeah, actually Robin taught me too. My, my first initiation was with Robin, but uh, it wasn't official. It was just during Reiki share. And then, uh -huh. and then later, officially, I did with Barbara. And Jim joined Barbara on, for level 3 and 4. Actually, you were in my remotely in my class for Reiki Four. You were on the right, phone. right, <laughs> right. So, so level four we did together. Yes, level four um, we did together. So Jim mentioned one thing, which is mm, you know Reiki, even Reiki masters, advanced Reiki healers, they still go through through sicknesses. Yes. So even though you are doing miracles, you know some karmic thing or some things that you attract uh, get to you, but it's completely on different level. It's just you take the sickness differently. You resolve it differently. And even if you, ch if you choose to go leave that plane, it's still quite different. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you guys brought that up because I was just going to ask you if you could touch just a second about self-healing and performing self-reiki and you know, in general, do you guys do it on yourself and, and do you find it effective or is it better to find another Reiki healer to help you when you know and identify it um, in yourself and do you also think that there is a need to, do you think we're absorbing people's energy un, un, unknowingly? Lots of questions, but yes. Um, let me, is it alright if I take this one, Max? Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, First of all, yes, you can do Reiki healing on yourself. It's a, it, you can do it because energy is energy, and you can get energy from the universe to help you to uh, become a circuit for that energy in your body. Um, it's, I find it harder to heal myself because when you're healing somebody else, you're using their energy also. And when you're healing yourself, you're using your energy and energy out. Yeah, that's how it feels. It's almost like you're almost <laughs> you don't no, have enough energy to. <laughs> so it feels so it, like you're um you're not getting as much energy, but you're still getting a lot of energy. Even it's your belief system that has to be ramped up when you're healing yourself. You have to believe that that energy is coming and working on you because you can't really feel it on yourself as much as you can feel it on other people. At least I find it in my case. Now, the other thing is, is yes, sometimes you are taking on other people's energies, and there are some uh, galactic things that you can do to stop that. And also, when you break off from having a Reiki session, you always say, the bond between me and thee is broken, so that that energy can stop flowing at that time. 
in both directions because as you are healing someone, you are also being healed by the energies that are coming down through you and out of you. And so this can also cause energies to come back up through as well. Energy is flowing. It's just going. And so if they have something that is an illness of, of some nature, you can shut that off at the end by saying the bond between me and thee is broken for now. Now there's another galactic Reiki thing called the Rook, which uh, stops energy from coming out of them to you. And we'll learn that later. Uh, well, Reiki One doesn't teach that, but if if uh, I think that it should be a Reiki One teaching because it's important. So it it is. Uh, I'll show you that later. We'll put it that way. And this I stops stop any, any any energy from coming back to you. So if you feel like there's negative energy on that person or that they have a lot of negativity, you can actually block it off right away and still be able to give them the energy. It'll just be one way. It won't flow back. Yay. Thank you, Thank you for that answer. Thank you. And now, thank you. Wonderful. And now I welcome you as a healer. Alayana. Nihalanaya <coughs> My name Yahweh, Yana haya hama yana ham yana haya ham yana haya ham yana Are you a healer? Welcome a healer in yourself. Healing is a miracle. Maybe the only miracle which, which is permitted always. It's a miracle which you can carry with you and exercise at any moment. Many of you, all of you wanted the proof of the miracle the proof of the spirit, proof of the God. And here you got it with your fingertips, with your palms. You can turn it on any time to experience the spirit in action right away, whenever you need on demand, spirit on demand. Reiki is miracle on demand, spirit on demand. 
Welcome it. Allow yourself into it. Bathe in it. Immerse in it. Be it. Reiki welcomes you as you welcome it. It is love materialized, love manifested. Love, the essence of love manifested in you. Welcome. If you don't want to speak, just mute yourself, please. Um, all right, the history of Reiki is wonderful. Uh, many cultures, all cultures have shamanic healers, energy healers. If you look at Christian paintings, in most cases there are uh, healers placing hands on people or just preaching. And when you see talented masters, the positions of hands are positions of sending energy through from hands. It's not like usually not like that. It is like that. It is sending the energy either to the crowd or connecting to the sky or connecting to the earth or connecting to the water, connecting to the trees. It's always energy connection. So, you know, in all times and in the times of, um, I would say, when the oil paintings were, were made with, with uh, Christian saints, you can see the saints being, being energy healers. <clears throat> Um, the most, uh, I would say, sophisticated ways of uh, energy healing are in the East, in China, in India. And in India it would be yoga, in China it would be Qigong and related arts. Qigong and related arts. Um, uh, tai Chi is also a, <clears throat> an energy, self-energy healing art. And not surprising, it came with uh, uh, came to the Japan, and there there is Qigong art in secret schools. Um, most of these arts are in secret schools. Usually, the mainstream um, the mainstream is repressing the energy healing arts for so for many 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 centuries. Uh, energy healing arts were in secret schools; they weren't public. Uh, there were sh medicine woman, women, uh, shamans, but it wasn't a part of <clears throat> establishment, usually, in most cases. <clears throat> it was sort of kept secret. And it was secret in Japan as well. There were like secret schools or closed schools. And um, it kind of decayed in Japan to a certain extent in a way that you taught, but you, it wasn't efficient and it wasn't making people much healthier. And uh, the founder of Reiki was in that crisis. He was uh, a Qigong practitioner, but he couldn't really help himself and other people and members of his family. So he, he prayed, he had a crisis, he prayed, he went to the fast for many days in the on the mountain and he was given that Reiki art and he didn't even know that he had it until he hurt himself and placed his hand on the wound and it healed and then he discovered that art in himself and for a while he was healing his family and friends until and his name is Makao Usui, Usui. Mikao, Mikao Usui. You will get the electronic wonderful electronic textbook so you, you will read that would be part of the homework um, <clears throat> and um, and then he started teaching it to others and uh, his student made it into a school basically Mikao was a healer who discovered it taught it and then somebody else the student made it into a system which can be transferred from one teacher to another and then it was still closed closed school and it was expensive closed school um, and then the war happened and by the end of the war uh, 1945 Japan was an on the verge of destruction and the Reiki uh, keepers of that tradition um, realized it has to be salvaged. If the Japan is destroyed, that art has to be saved. So they 
<clears throat> sent a, one of the teachers, a woman, uh, Madame Takata, to uh, what that island? I don't remember the island. The closest to Japan, American island closest to Japan. I'm sorry, you know the Hawaii. Hawaii, yeah, Hawaii Takata, yeah, to Hawaii, um, and and then she started teaching it to Westerners, and then her students figured out that you know the price can be lowered and it can be made into their inexpensive art, and then when this happened first invention or discovery of it basically receiving the gift second learning how to teach others how to transfer the gift next how to release it to the west and last how to make it inexpensive then it 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 basically became most most known um, most popular art of energy healing of others yoga would be even more popular but it's energy healing of yourself and Reiki is energy healing of others. The difference between yoga and Reiki is very superficial. It's the same thing. What is called um, prana is almost the same thing as uh, Reiki energy. And it's not physical, it is the spirit. As a researcher, I, I know for sure it's not something which is measured by the devices. It is not electricity, not electromagnetics, not sound. It is vibration, but not measured by modern traditional devices. It's something related to the level which is beyond physicality, beyond the matter. It's very close to the matter, but it's beyond. Now, how does it feel? Usually my exercise, and that's how I was taught, is kind of warm up your palms, keep breathing and breathe intentionally like nicely and then build a, a ball of energy between your palms and kind of inflate it with energy and as you breathe when you breathe in you take the energy from the universe and as you breathe out inflate it with that ball with golden healing energy and start feeling it flowing between your hands and if you feel wonderful if you don't feel you just need to get to that zone now or later. Don't worry if it doesn't come right away, but hopefully it does. And then what I do, I test that energy by sending it from my right hand to the left. And I just keep a little distance and I move my hand and intend to send it from right hand to the left. I don't know if it works other way, but if you're left handed, maybe it would be just symmetrical. And then I start feeling it. I start feeling that maybe it's electrical, kind of electrical feeling, a little of kind of charge moving across the hand, but it, you can see the movement. It's a little buzz. It reminds me like if you blow gently on your hand, that would be the same feeling. And what is funny when I do healing at the air and there is wind around, I can't feel Reiki as, as, as easily. I do feel it, but it's kind of the wind interferes. So the feeling is very gentle. It's like a gentle wind. And then if you move it away it's you I, I keep still feeling it I feel that movement even if it's from the distance and that's one of the properties of Reiki it moves through the distance it moves through the clothing which electromagnetic energy usually doesn't it moves even through water it moves through the walls and I have experienced distant Reiki as well it's somewhat different but it's all also works and when you're done practicing you can place the fingers on your heart and send the Reiki there. Right. And you should give another chant, right? Send the energy to your heart. That would be the main exercise. Uh, typical Reiki meditation is breathe in the energy of the universe and when you breathe out inflate the healing golden ball of energy in your heart that's simple and it is self-healing that's what you that's what you do for self-healing I <laughs> 
Do you want to do another chant? Are you sure? Yanna haya hama. Yanna haya. Yanna haya hama. Thanks, Alison. So, chanting is not part of traditional Reiki. Um, usually, you do Reiki silently. And for me, it took some effort to disconnect my focus on my hands to focus on my chanting and now I can do Reiki and chant at the same time. It came naturally, I just remembered it. But um, So if you don't, if you feel that when you talk or chant Reiki stops in your hands, you know, it's okay, you just kind of have to alternate or don't chant. But chanting is part of galactic healing, it's part of shamanic healing and uh, talking, talking to the patient is part of the part of the Reiki healing. Usually, um, psychic reading and psychic consultation and guidance, uh, health guidance is as important or even more important than what, than what you do with the hands. So it's, um, it's not required but it is a, a great um, assistance because usually any pain is resulting from fear. So you do a little bit of psychoanalysis, you treat that pain, but also you treat that underground, underlying fear. And that is the first of five principles of Reiki. Uh, Reiki is very simple, I, I, again, it's very simplified. So there are five principles of Reiki, and number one is... Today I will not be angry. Today I will not be angry. So that anger is usually arising from fear. So fear comes first, and then there is anger, and anger results in pain. You know, cancer is anger at yourself or anger, hidden anger. So you solve the you solve the anger, solve the fear, and uh, and um, and then you, that that's the path to, to the cure. Um, and the second principle, today I will not worry. So these are two first principles, they're negative, neg double negatives. Negate the fear, negate the anger, negate the worry. So today I will not be angry, today I will not worry. So first principles, and they are really nice principles of Reiki. So uh, you have to get into the zone. You habitually lift yourself into the Reiki. You start the Reiki and the word today was kind of make, making me question why today, why not always? And the idea is that you know you're in physical reality, you live this life, you go up and down, shift up and down. So staying in the highest possible but then you don't get lessons of the of the of the low level. And as a healer you do both. You you go down, grab someone down there, and lift them up. Go down, grab someone there, lift them up. So you shift. That's as breathing. Reiki is as breathing. You you shift up and down. So lifting up someone yourself, lifting up yourself, and lifting up someone else is habitual part of Reiki. You just get used to that. You come to the world, meet there whoever needs healing, and then get that move and it is not, cannot be described 
in words. Lots of Reiki is something which you don't do. Like I can talk for the many hours, but really it's it's something which you don't do mentally. It is something which you do in the heart or beyond the heart, in higher heart. Right? So so lift yourself up, get into the zone, stop being angry, stop worrying. And it's sometimes it's hard when the patient is negative or especially if they're in the suffering, if they if you know they are they will not make it, you know. You go to the hospital and you do Reiki to people who wouldn't make it. So stop being angry, stop stop the fear. Don't worry. Smile anyway. Like as a good doctor, as a saint, just smile anyway. You know it's not the end, right? It is just a phase. The death is just another, it's just the mirror of the birth, right? Uh, there are incarnations, and reincarnation is not part of us, Usu Reiki, but it is certainly part of galactic understanding, of metaphysical understanding. Many lifetimes, many lessons, and sometimes, um, sometimes somebody is in a hurry to exit because there is another body, body waiting for them. <laughs> Somebody has already fell in love, and uh, there is an opportunity to get um, born again. So why would you stay in that old body, right? Mm. And there are many other reasons why people exit. Sometimes you're just done here. Okay, now a bathroom break. My computer needs a new battery. <laughs> okay. Okie doke. Have the key to like. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess I will take a question right now. Is there any question so far? So I could I could feel the energy as I mm -hmm. made the between my palms and mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. I moved my hand closer to then I could feel it, but I didn't quite feel it as it as I moved it out, as you described. Oh, it disappears when you move it out? Yeah. I can focus. Yeah, very often I don't feel it at all. Like if you are in 3D state of mind in in the zone of 3D, I don't feel it at all. So I guess it depends really where you are in your in your, in your state. I yeah, I guess I have to explain a little more the nature of that energy. So it comes from the heart. And um, the physical nature is that there is a vibrational, every chakra is a vibration between the brain, physical brain, and the length of the spine, it's electric, electric, it's physical electric um, current, electric vibration goes back and forth. And the lower chakra is bigger distance, so the frequency is lower, the higher chakra is short distance, higher vibration. And um, heart vibration is basically central. It's a central ch chakra. Um, but it's based on this mm, physical vibration. There is a, a portal or transdimensional vortex which, which um, goes to the other dimension, to the etheric field. We call it etheric or astral field or Reiki field or prana field. So, And that is already non-physical. So that vibration kind of two make the portal, you create that live, physical, human vibration. It's neural, uh, electric impulses going through the nerves. And anyway, when you kind of tune into that vibration, you open the portal and then the spirit comes in. <laughs> That's technical explanation of what Reiki is. You tune through your brain, through your physical illusionary, that's you know illusionary world. You, you tune in that, that, that illusionary world to connect to the spirit. And you open the portal and the spirit comes in. And then the spirit comes in through the heart and gives you that sensation of, of Reiki, sensation of the movement. And again, it is either, it's, 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 it, it comes through the uh, receptors of, you know, physical receptors. You get it as, as if it was something physical. But you get the signature of it, which is a little different from physical. And uh, it can be a buzz. It can be lower buzz, like, like lower buzz. It can be high pitch, um, and it can be uh, 
electric impulses in your hands, and that's how you know it works. And even if you are not tuned, sometimes you know that it works from other reasons. You just have knowing that it works, although you don't actually feel it. But usually I do, especially if I see someone who is ready to receive, like someone sick who is in pain, Reiki just starts flowing. And when I invite it, it flows pretty strongly. And that's the main principle of how you use it. You basically you apply it from the distance or you place the hands. And if you move the hands from to different positions, at certain positions you just feel here it flows more strongly, and that's where you stay. And then, and if it stops flowing, it's time maybe to move on. And sometimes you work usually on a traditional positions. You work from the head to the to the feet, and sometimes you work all the way to the feet, and nothing goes, and you're kind of completely desperate. You know what I'm doing here? Am I a healer or what? You know if the reiki doesn't flow, and then you come to the feet, and there is a huge flow there. So, so that's where it is needed. Maybe you have to work on um, whatever chakra is down below. It's like the root chakra is. Where the legs come together, but you know there are additional vibrational chakras to down below, below the root chakra. So, uh, so you work on the, on that place, and sometimes I would do the whole treatment in one place, and um, that's how Jesus Christ taught his Reiki. It's a channeled information, but that's how he taught his energy healing. They applied Reiki, like put the hands together, applied Reiki right on the back, on the hump. And that was, you know, you you connect in one place, and uh, and then the energy goes where wherever it is needed. So you trust it. It's always a dialogue between you and the spirit, and the spirit tells you where to go and um, and what to do. You put your intention, and the whole process. I mean, why can spirit heal someone without your help, right? Why do why do they need a healer? You know, if it's all the spirit work, why do they need a healer? A uh, huge question, but basically the short answer is you petition for the healing and the patient consents for the healing. That agreement which happens when they receive Reiki and you give Reiki is most important. You petition, you, your additional free will, free consciousness and their free will are respected. So both of you want that healing to happen and that's what is important. That's why spirit can plug in when connect and do the healing when both are um, consenting to that. When you drive now and if you see uh, emergency machine, emergency car or uh, car accident, use one hand on the, on the steering wheel but another hand you, you send rake, right? Don't, don't you know get distracted but but you send Reiki right you send Reiki uh, when you hear the news somebody's hurt you now know what to do right you just send distant Reiki mm -hmm. the hand position for distant Reiki can be different I like healing them as I would heal myself I kind of place the, myself in their bodies and then disconnect you know for many disconnection is the hardest part you know feeling their pain is and we come to the next principle, uh, next unofficial principle of Reiki, uh, not the core one. Uh, you don't take on their pain. You don't. You block their pain. Uh, learn from other healers. Learn from your past experiences. Uh, you, you know, how do, do the healers and the doctors live long, happy lives? If they see the suffering and death through their lives, and just block it. They, they're the healers. That's the main principle. You help them without hurting yourself. You don't give them your energy. You channel the energy from the universe. That's that's what you do in Reiki. In uh, Qigong is a little different. You accumulate the energy from yours and then send the pulse. In Reiki, you just Passively channel. You don't move your hands. You place your hands, and um, moving is okay. But but in traditional basic level one, you place your hands and um, work as a channel. Invite energy from the universe. Invite the word invite. You basically don't push it. 
you invite. And if the energy flows, you thank it. And that's uh, the core principle number three, uh, thanking. So three positive principle principle thank thank um, the universe thank the spirit so today I will be thankful for all my gifts I think that's how it sounds today I will be thankful for all my gifts and the fourth principles uh, today I will work diligently again that word today means you don't have to work hard all the time mm -hmm. right you like breathing, you work and then you relax, you work and relax. And work of Reiki doesn't have to be hard work, it's diligent, but it can be relax yourself into being in the healing state. So let the, sp let the, let the spirit, let the healing do their job. Um, and on the other side, imagine the universal energy, the source energy, but also imagine personalities. These would be your healing helpers, which could be ascendant masters, humans from other side, um, aliens from other side, angels, higher dimensional uh, consciousnesses. Many of them volunteer to work as healers. And when you go there, you also might volunteer, come back and be a healing spirit. So. So right now you're here, but later you will be on the, on their side doing their work. So, so it's it, these are personalities. They have their own diagnosis, their own understanding what to do. So trust them; they have a very good idea what to do. And the last fifth principle is: today I will be kind for, to everybody. So that's kind of three principles together: thankful, work, and. Um, work in a kind state. It's kind of so obvious, but, but you know, Reiki is obvious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think I'm, I'm done with the main, uh, main principles part. Uh, I should give you a chant. Um, let me think. Um, we'll just chant on that principle. So all five of them, two negative. No fear, no anger, no worry and uh, three positive gratitude work and kindness <laughs> I know la mahaina, who la mahaina, who la mahaina, who la who la ina, na mahaina, who na mahaina, who la mahaina, who la who la ina. Yanaha Yanaha Yanaya 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 Yanayam 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 I know the song. <laughs> oh, that's what oh, I sing. That's what I Every time she sings, my heart, I just cry and cry as if I'm knowing what she's saying. It is the, I, what a profound 
reaction I've had to your singing, I just need to tell you that. I am, at, I, both times, I'm just weeping. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, my, oh my goodness. goodness. I can't even tell you. The first time I couldn't even speak. I, it was, oh, <laughs> thank you. Oh, of course. Thank you so much for for saying that and receiving that. And I just, oh, I love you. I'm giving you a big hug and thank you. Thank you I so feel much. it. Our hearts, I am just absolutely vibrating in love oh, right now. No. That that song in my heart is like like Max oh, just oh. said, I know it. It's I know it. We've sang it together. Yes, yes. We have. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, thank you. That was so beautiful. <laughs> All right, Wendy, All right. Wendy. Uh, and, and your um, little bit of your chant, uh, again for five Reiki principles. I'm sorry, what did you want me to do, Max? Uh, I want, uh, you I to, want give to give us a blessing, us a blessing. Galactic, galactic blessing, blessing. for five okay. Reiki In any language? Uh, whatever uh, whatever feels, feels, good. feels good. Okay. Anaya halana haya ha Anaya halanu awala hinu ha Inaya hinaya lahana hi ha Nurana hi Nurana halanaya Nana hi Nurana hi Unaya halana hayana hi Oh, Hanahi, Onna you hala nu hala wanahi, Ha nu ha, Una ya hi la nahi, Oh, Hanu ha. Shianiata, Sonoala, Siturukwema, Kisona, Nayua, Aka, Shona. Beautiful, Wendy. That was great. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know how it is. You don't think about it. It just sort of happens. I know. It's. I know. It's beautiful. I created. Wendy. Wendy. Yes. Go ahead, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. It, 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 going to ask what language that was. That, 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 that just uh, chanted. Uh, chanted. Well, I'm not sure, but I know that they 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 call when they come to me. They often tell me they're the the galactic shamana. Um, so it's almost like it's almost like they know when we are in the company of all shamans, and so that's what it feels like to me. That's the information I get. It's like a collective of shamans. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. I, I too I had, had a very visceral reaction. reaction. So thank so you for thank sharing, you sharing that. that. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Yeah, that song was. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Max. Yeah, that song was a confirmation. That song came to me like that. These words are coming when I do kayaking on the ocean. I pedal and uh, chant to the ocean, which is alive. The body of the water. Every body of the water is alive. Everybody. Yes, everybody. Right? The water in the water water is, is, is um, And ocean is a huge body of consciousness, of conscious water. So uh, I sing to the ocean, and dolphins come out, and that's what I sing, that, that kind of chant. All right. Anyway, we have like a few minutes left before Jim picks up in about 18 minutes. Um, practically, what do you do? Um, the homework assignment and materials will be posted on the in the comments to the same place, and I uh, will give you the link to... But you know, in the meetup, there where you found the link, there will be a, a homework assignment. And uh, don't feel pressed to do everything at once. Do whatever you're called to. But basically, the main thing: practice. And the second thing: uh, browse through the manual. It's for you to read. It's a wonderful manual. I wanted to write my own, but it was I just found the one which spells out everything I wanted to say. And there is a little addition what I wanted to add there. But basically, it's it's perfectly written. And we have both the rights to redistribute it, so it's it's actually kosher to give it to you. All right. Um, 
How Matt, do you practice? Yes? Can you send me what you sent them also? Okay. But you already have it, but I can send it oh, again. I just wanted to see what they were looking at. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Um, pra practicing. Um, um, you know, if you have pets, that would be the easiest. Um, on the other hand, they have little attention span. So if you just send Reiki to them, some of them would take it, but some of them, especially sick ones, but some of them would like to play. They would bite your hand when while you send it. So what I usually do, I use one hand. My left hand is usually more Reiki hand. And the right hand, I would do. I would pet them and send Reiki at the same time. Mm -hmm. But when Jim does Reiki, they just mm, what is it were melt. They melt. They wouldn't go anywhere. They would wait. Oh, by the way, that's hand position. That's what my teacher does when they need answers. So you can do different ways ask answer questions to the to the spirit. But that's what she does. She kind of asks the question. Uh, no, do I want to eat this? kind of food and then receive the answer. Basically now the spirit is connected to your heart chakra. That's how you receive your messages and they are translated into physical sensations in the palms and the nerves here. Um, the, the Reiki, how does the patient feel Reiki? Hopefully, yeah, that will be one of the assignments. Get Reiki yourself. If you haven't get, got re gotten Reiki before um, find a way to get Reiki. Reiki share, you find Reiki share through meetup.com, just search around for Reiki share. Uh, keywords are Reiki, energy healing, star seeds, uh, you'll find it. And then there, uh, Google also, Google Maps is great. Uh, search again for Reiki. Um, uh, Unitarist Church, Unitarist Unitarian, no, Unitarian and Unitarist, I think maybe are too different. Unitarist Church, or maybe the same thing. Unitarian and Unitarist. Unitarian Church and Unitarist Church. Is the same thing or different? I don't remember. I think the same thing. Unitarian Church, uh, they have services every weekend, and part of the service is Reiki. If you, and get, get it both. Get it as a patient there. You just sit there and they give you Reiki. And also, when before the service mentioned that you are Reiki one and you want to provide Reiki and that would be for you a perfect way to to practice. You can get your hands on two, three people in uh, one service. So so when I needed Reiki practice that what I, I did and uh, it's great. Uh, Reiki share is when people come together usually between three and thirty people and uh, they have Reiki tables massage tables, they uh, take turns and sometimes it's one person working on another and sometimes it is the maximum I think was maybe seven or eight. It's really hard to get to, <laughs> to get to the person if it's like eight people but but um, that is great. Uh, so if you have a, a if you have a, a wife or a husband or a child uh, and you sleep with them um, the Reiki positions would be a little different because when you lay down on, uh, it's it's maybe not as convenient to put. But can I show on yourself? So, so usually my position, I lay on my side. My position would be one like that, and another one for my wife would be on the butt. Uh, and uh, that's the top chakra and, and bottom chakra. And I would send the energy between the hands. And sometimes I would send it just in it and sometimes I would kind of play uh, an energy ball. It, it comes naturally, it's, it creates by itself, but but then if you discover I can control the frequency, I can actually control how quickly it goes and usually it goes like zit, 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 zit. So that's how it moves. The second one would be on the heart and um, you Intentionally send the intention to work on the heart chakra and on the top, on the top crown chakra, and um, here on the on the third eye chakra. Uh, touching the third eye is for upgrade of the third eye, opening and upgrade of the third eye. Uh, the energy goes. There are two types of energy: one through the palm, golden energy, diffused golden, 
it's very smart, very diffused. It goes like diffuse light everywhere, and it finds the target and heals whatever is needed. It's it is. You don't guide it. You basically you trust it. It is feminine aspect of Reiki. You trust it to go wherever. And uh, masculine aspect is when you will it. It's forceful. You want something to happen, and that you do through the fingers. You send energy through the fingers, and usually the fingers. I learned it from Jim, and Jim it was channeling. Uh, did it from uh, channeled extraterrestrials. It is it, uh, you connect to the bones. So you connect to the bones on the head. Uh, you connect to the bones on the jaw, on the spine. Here you can feel the joints. Here you feel the joint. Here you connect to the joints. So, so you basically connect with the fingers to the joints. And mechanics of it is that bones are specially structured to be resonating. The skull is a resonator. Crystal skulls, the skull, the crystals in the skull, they all are resonators, like churches, like cathedrals. They have special shape to resonate to create the portal. So the brain and the nerves create the electric vibration, and the bones create the resonation. So both are important. And uh, and you connect, when a healer connects their bones to the patient bones, it is an additional resonation. So that's the idea. Um, other positions like that, but I... Oh, I thought it, it's you overheating, but it's actually the sun. Right. So, yeah, send the energy, and um, the the healing always has. Um, it's nice to have the beginning and the end, right? So the beginning, traditionally, you ask may I have a permission to. I really hate that phrase, but people use it to touch you. It kind of has a fear in it. I would, I would, I would never use it. But that's what people use. May may have a permission to touch you, right? I would say, you know, um, I usually say, hop on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> And what's your and favorite color? <laughs> Sounds like a pickup line. <laughs> <laughs> and what's your sign? <laughs> <laughs> That's the oldest one in the book, Max. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and then they start chanting, and they get completely uh, scared, and they 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 wonder basically if I have any additional interest in uh, in them on the bed so <laughs> so um, it's it's an art to to keep it high so so um, yeah I guess I, I I say do you have any questions to the spirit and things like that so so and I guess the, the chant is for me is the way to, for, for the entrance you have to like have that particular entrance and just the fact that they come to you and uh, get on the table and um, and trust you to to connect to their spirit, I think, is sufficient. And the exit is usually, you wrap it up. There are different ways. Um, G will show, but basically, you kind of, what Barbara teaches, imagine uh, throwing a healing blue healing blanket over the patient. Um, sometimes I give blows like, <laughs> um, especially over heart chakra. Um, and then you thank them for the opportunity to to work on them. And um, and uh, I usually say, take it easy, and imagine that you carry a bowl of hot soup, and don't spill it. So basically, after you finished the work, I have opened a lot of blockages. I have opened a lot of uh, closed things. And um, you are not fully protected. You are in higher dimension. You are not ready for 3D life, for fight and fear. So I say, try to not to, not to get in any conflicts today until you sleep. You will be protected again after you sleep. So, 
So carry it home, keep it keep it uh, low, and um, don't engage in sports, or active sports, and things of that sort. And uh, don't watch um, the news <laughs> because you open, you you might uh, take more than um, than you're protected. And and then um, and then uh, keep that vibration. Basically, once you got that vibration, you can recreate it yourself. All right, so one question was, uh, what do you do uh, not to get negative energies, and what do you do to get rid of them? So you do the Reiki, you connect, you do your honest healing, but sometimes there is so much fear in the patient, or pain, or anger, you cannot stand it anymore. And it's your duty to disconnect, your duty to keep yourself healthy. It's like you're not supposed to harm yourself. You're not supposed to sacrifice your health for the healing of others. Absolutely not. You, you, you are supposed to keep yourself in good shape. And this way you help others. You can't help others if you don't love yourself. You love God as you love others as you love yourself. You create the beauty. You create the perfection. Right. So, so this connection for me is easy. You just wish to disconnect. Sometimes you don't know if it is temporary or not. You just disconnect temporarily and then see if you want to come back. And for me, disconnection is gently and gracefully turn. And that's the way that turn is aligned with disconnection. So I want to exit. So like like you exit from the highway. Like you, you turn, right? <laughs> right. It's very easy. And then... Um, I, I go eat something. Yeah, I'm still addicted to food, so I go drink, eat, breathe. Breathing is sufficient, actually. But um, don't forget to breathe. Guide your your patient to breathe. Um, I usually start giving them the idea to to that meditation. Take in the prana and inflate the golden energy in your heart. Uh, that that is sufficient meditation. Now, if you picked up something, uh, you would know, right? <laughs> you would know. Uh, from anger or pain or being too energized. Uh, first you pray. And the prayer, uh, in, there are of course many ways. Uh, nowadays it's very informal. Very, I would say, freestyle. And usually it's gratitude, invitation, and gratitude. So you thank the Divine Mother, invite the healing to yourself, and thank again. Um, and you, 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 you pick the target of your prayer, the address where you want to send it. I, lately I, I, I pray to Divine Mother, Thank which you. is the same, the universe. And uh, dumping the pain, um, um, if, if the spirit, if the negative spirit is attached to usually it's, um, it's coldness in the back, so you know what it is. As soon as they discover it, it's easy to get rid of. The numbness and coldness in the back, in the, in the spine. And you say, I, I caught you. Thank you for joining, but you know, thank you, maybe no, something like that. And... Uh, and intend it to go away, warm it up, dress, you know, wrap up in a blanket, warm up your back, you know. A strong literally works well, the tiger balm works great. Incense, healing foods, healing incense, uh, and if nothing works, you know, alcohol. I, would, I wouldn't recommend, but actually, you don't recommend? Personally, no, just because the vibration of All right. alcohol. Alright, hot Indian food, how about that? Yeah. Something like which really shakes you, Arch Archangel Mike. So, and you know, and then I, I, I do 90% of Reiki myself, and then I go to Reiki healers, and they help. So go find the Reiki healer. Usually the barter works. So what's the problem with the alcohol? Uh, it unprotects you. It um, it kind of dissolves everything. It makes you sick, but then it uh, when you come back, you're not as whole as before. So. Alcohol and others, other drugs, 
they get you out of that high state. You basically want to be high and happy. Yeah, staying positive is wonderful. Yeah, staying positive no matter what. Don't worry. Number two principle number two. So, so yeah, alcohol. I don't find it working well with Reiki and channeling. Uh, it's uh, some of the channelers drink like you know one of the first ones. Uh, there was a, a, a text, um, you know, how the, the book where um, they just described, transcribed their their sessions, and then she took a break, smoked a cigarette, drank a beer, and then continued. So, so it it is possible, but still, I find it's it's just easier to stay in high vibration without, even without coffee. Yes, I would say it's not, it's not by itself. It's it's just a tool. It's just uh, one of the tools. Whatever. Who was saying it? Krishna, Krishna Das was saying it. Whatever gets you through the night, right? So if you have to, you know, sometimes you're so low that even alcohol gets you higher, right? Even a cigarette. Sometimes you're so low, even coffee would get you higher. But, you know, normally you kind of get in that higher state and all of those bring you down. So your idea is to, to stay healthy and... Uh, and uh, don't be surprised to go on ups and down, right? So when you are with your other people, they drag you down. Like if you know your wife drinks coffee, it's really hard to stay away from coffee. If you, if your family eats uh, eats animal food, um, how do meat, then uh, it's really hard to stay vegetarian. You like really harm them by by not be with them. But so shift back and forth. I mean. When you come to Reiki, you don't have not the whole life, but when you come to Reiki, shift yourself up, lift yourself up. Is it sufficient? Do the do the assistance of crystals come into play? Absolutely. Jim is well, eager to jump. Uh, how about uh, we give you a, a short chant and then you can jump in? Well, I just wanted to say something about the use of different drugs and things when you're channeling or doing Reiki. Um, your intention is the major force behind all the things that happen. I don't think that uh, necessarily coffee or a beer or something, uh, something not life-altering will change your effect. Now, if you're drunk or if you're very high or if you're if you are in an altered state, that will definitely change the way you do things uh, because. Spirits and energies move differently when you're in that kind of state. Well, now, if you have a cup of coffee and you do channeling, it's not really going to affect your channeling like immensely. I think that your intention and how you're feeling, your perception, your prayer life, all are more important to that, the aspect of healing, than uh, a cup of coffee or a cigarette or one beer. But keep in mind, it is your intention to do your best work when you are dealing with others. So if you feel that that would detract from your best work, obviously do not do that. So I would say to you, use your best judgment when doing your healing because you want the best for your clients. You want the best for these people. You're sending love and light healing energy and all this, uh, if any of those things would cause you to be less effective, don't do it. Prepare yourself before you go into Reiki. Prepare yourself before you go into anything that is spiritual, especially channeling, healing, things of that nature. And if any of those things are going to uh, cause a problem or make you less effective, think about that. Think about your who you're working with and the, the healing energy that is coming from you. And if, if you feel that that is a detriment, then don't do it. If it, doesn't, if it doesn't matter, if it's not going to harm anybody or if it doesn't affect how you heal or, or anything like that, then that's fine. But you as an individual take responsibility for your own healing energy when you are doing something of this nature. So use the purest form of yourself to help be as pure as you can with your client. Does that make sense? Um, 
And I just wanted to throw that in there because don't get hung up on a cup of coffee if it's not going to make any difference. If it doesn't bother you, if it doesn't uh, affect you in any way, don't get hung up on that. Be more interested in your the spiritual aspect of what you're doing. Be more interested in the results of what you're doing and put yourself in that in a full way. And it, if a cup of coffee bothers you, then don't do it. If it doesn't bother you, then just you can have a cup of coffee and still do wonderful work. Does that make sense to you? Wonderful. Yes, uh, Jim, I, I will uh, have to move to a new place. Um, we are in front of the uh, Elysian office, and I think they become nervous that we might spook some of the customers. Uh, so <laughs> we'll move to the uh, to the lounge area. In, in uh, uh, but you 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 keep going, and we will be connected in in. Uh, in well, a you never introduced your lovely the lovely people there. Please introduce yourself. Oh. Yes. Hi, Hi, Soul Family. My name is Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Nice to meet you. <laughs> My name is Jenna. Hi, Jenna. Hi, everyone. I'm Allison. Hi, Allison. I just like to um, to meet every everybody has names that is on on the screen. So I just wanted to make sure that you introduced yourself as well. And David is here with me. He's he's a learning Reiki and Slash is also my a guinea pig. So, uh, <laughs> when we come back from the break, uh, we're we're I'm going to teach you a bunch of um, hands-on techniques, and we're going to be a little bit more interactive at this point. And we're going to uh, I'm going to field a lot of questions. Okay, Jim, can I ask you a question? A question. Yes. Um, so. Max was saying that you know if he sees an ambulance or something or hear bad news, uh, he sends kind of a good vibe. But at the same time, like I heard that if you are sending healing energy without uh, without what is it uh, without a permission, yes, uh, you kind of get uh, bounce back that energy and. You know, if you are remotely sending healing energy to someone who is like who has a cancer or who has some kind of uh, pain, and without sending uh, healing energy, uh, without sending energy without uh, uh, without permission, energy, yeah, without permission, you get uh, you get that pain or you know uh, disease. No. Yourself. Let me let me tell you what happens when you send out healing energy without permission is that the subconscious, whenever energy comes to you, if somebody's sending you healing energy, you're going your subconscious is going to know if it's a good or a bad energy. It's either going to let it in or it's not going to let it in. There's nothing else that's going to happen. It's not going to bounce back to you or anything like that. If your intentions are for good healing, why would something bad happen to you? No, that's not true. That's to stop people from sending their energies out. Um, when you send your energy out and it, it reaches someone that doesn't accept it, it will just not, they just won't accept your healing energy. But if they really want healing, if the subconscious knows that this is good healing energy, then the, the body will accept it and no, no harm will come to you for that because your intention is for good and healing so it won't bounce back to you anything negative oh. because that's it just can't when you're sending out good well if it bounces off it'll come back good to you right. it is the same as it the same energy that goes there is coming back so it's not if it doesn't go into their body, if they don't give any permission, nothing can come out of the body if they don't accept it. Okay. So, so it's just it's sort of bouncing off. Bouncing off. So, so, Jim, so Jim, in, in Catalina's uh, situation, then, which many empaths, obviously, many of us experience when someone's just in our 
in our daily experience or walking down the street, you know how you kind of get that feeling like they need healing, but maybe they don't know they need it or... Exactly, exactly. So, you know, you get that feeling like, so you send this push of energy healing to them and, and usually, and, and this is what I wanted to know is, is that the okay thing to do? Because usually what I do is I just say, for for whatever their highest good is to 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 uh, break down any belief systems that no longer serve them, and I kind of just leave it there. Yeah, anything yeah, positive. Anything positive. Uh, when, you're uh, when you're doing something, something positive, positive like, like that, that, what? No evil is going to bounce back because if they don't accept your healing, there's nothing getting into them to send anything out of them. So it's if they don't accept it, it just bounces away, and it'll if it comes back to you, it'll come back in the same form that it left you. So that's the way I see it. Did it doesn't make any sense for evil to come upon you if you try to heal somebody, unless they're surrounded by negativity, and then the negativity is reacting. But still, you're protected by your positive intention. In my opinion, it's like it, it would just, they would just deaden it. They would just have it fall away. But um, there's no bad that can happen to you with an intent of healing unless some, there is actually something coming to retaliate against you for some reason. Do you understand what I'm saying? There would be really no reason for any, anything to be retaliating against you. Yes, I understand. Thank you. Now, if there is a negative energy there with that person, they, that negative energy could retaliate. But if you ask permission, just so when you're sending out your healing energy, say, um, I just want to ask permission first if this energy will be accepted. And if you don't feel any anything about that, I would go ahead and send that positive energy to them. So, but chances so, of anybody, so anybody uh, having that kind of negative force around them is is sort of rare, especially when they're, you know, walking around in the street and things of that nature. Usually in their home is where they the spirit resides, and usually not in them. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to move or be able to uh, be in public. When the, when there's a possession, usually it's it's pretty severe. But I will give you some alternatives to some of the things that Max uh, has offered to you. I mean, there is. Uh, let me say this: there are so many things about uh, Reiki that are beautiful. There are so many things about Reiki that are intuitive and stylized because you yourself control energy like no one else in the whole world. Everybody has their own way of dealing with the energy in their hands, their hearts, their third eye and things. I know you can't see my face, but I'm over here. So, um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm just... I'm just showing you the patient right now. But um, I just wanted to let you know, Reiki is very intuitive. Intuitive meaning, well, what's that? Uh, that you use your own, own thought process. Sometimes the spirits will speak to you while you're doing Reiki. Has anybody experienced that? That when you're doing your Reiki, you're saying they're saying, you need to work on the feet also, or you need to work on the head also, or you need to work on the arms. Has anybody experienced that they're, that the spirits are guiding them to some part of the body? Jim, when um, I um, obviously I, I don't know, I don't have knowledge about healing, but um, I've automatically sent healing before, um, and I started talking Arturian language, and they moved my hands. Yes. They, move, they move my hands and I just allow them to do so it's like uh, they already know what they're doing. Exactly. 
And this is one of the things I'm talking about. Reiki is intuitive. It knows where the healing is needed. And you've heard it said, or I hope you have, that the energy goes where it is needed. When, even if you're touching the foot and it's needed in the head, the energy will move to the head. But isn't it better to go to the head if the head needs it? The energy will be more direct there. The energy will, you'll feel the energy going in in a, a greater way there. So it's just the way it is. Um, and that's being just open to the spirit to let them show you things. Some people are more sensitive to that than others. And it's some, some people don't have that at all. And it's not necessary because each person is intuitive in their own way, which means that the, each person has their own healing style. So, and that's what we're going to talk about today. For Reiki 1, I want you to, I'm going to show you the hand positions. I'm going to show you the, uh, some of the uh, personal healing hand positions also. And, but... As you are practicing on people during the week, I'd like you to try to practice on at least one person. If you've never done Reiki at all, if you don't know what it, really haven't experienced the energy of Reiki, if you really haven't tried to heal anybody, use your cat or your dog if you don't have anybody around. However, they won't be able to give you very much input except for how they act afterwards. So... Let me give you an example. Uh, there was a t day I was raking a dog, and the owner said, oh, my dog has been very, very down, seems very depressed, not moving around very much. I think there's something wrong. I think that he's sick, feeling sick and not unhappy or something. So I took all that information in. I asked the spirits to help me give this beautiful animal, whatever it needs to help it feel better. Of course, you know that it's not going to be able to say anything. But I did Reiki for about 25 minutes, and then the dog sort of got up and moved away. And um, the very next day, I got a phone call from the, the owner saying, Oh, my God, what did you do to my dog? He's jumping all around. He's uh, acting like a different kind of dog he's um, he woke me up at midnight and wanted to play and different things like that and I was like well he needed uh, he needed his energy fields open he needed this and that and the other thing they just let me know what he was doing but the Reiki worked and that was my response from the dog of course but I got it from the owner but um, do practice do practice and do intentions for your meditation, uh, for your Reiki. Whenever you are going to Reiki someone, you do have to have an intention that you're going to heal. You can't just walk up to somebody and start going, la, 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 Reiki, Reiki. Nah. And your, your, your heart should be in it, your mind should be in it, and your intentions should be in it. And I'm, for me, it's best if, also, the client's energy is in it as well because you're using your energy along with their energy. See, they're combining. When I'm doing a healing on somebody or when we're all doing a healing, the spirits and the universe and everyone, when we're all healing together, this energy is combining with the energy of the body that you're healing. So their energy is also important because they have to be intended that the, the energy that they have is also healing themselves. You know you can heal yourself, but when you're healing someone else, get their intention going for healing themselves as well. When you're all on the same page, you get a lot better results. Does that make sense? Any questions? Yes, I have a question. Um, Go ahead. So if you don't have much experience of Reiki and you try to send energy, healing energy, but you can't really feel 
if you're doing this right or not, and you you, you don't have like much uh, yeah. feedback. You know, if you can see the color from your fingertips or whatever, you can you know, oh, I'm sending energy, but you, you can, it's invisible, and you just have to um, trust yourself, or you know what I mean. So, well, yes. Yeah. Let me say, let me say this about that. Uh, if you're intending to heal someone, there's no wrong way to send healing energy. Everyone has healing energy in their hands, some to different degrees, depending on uh, their belief systems, depending on how the open they are to having spirits help them, depending on a, a lot of different things. But when you are healing somebody, and it doesn't matter if you feel it or not, you are sending energy of healing to that person because that's what your intent is. When you're touching somebody and you're doing Reiki, your, your intention is to be helping them, to be healing them. Let them know that, though. Let, let them know what your intention is so that they can attune their attent, uh, at themselves to that as well. So, yeah... When you say you're trying and you're not sure, you're definitely sending healing energy. And you don't have to try. It's already doing it. Your hands are all, everyone's hands have healing energy in them. It's something that uh, we have evolved to be able to do. We have been living in an electromagnetic field for thousands of years. The Earth has electromagnetic fields. The electromagnetic fields work through us, and also it comes out as healing energy, just like magnets in shoes, mm -hmm. electromagnetic energy. Magnetic, you know, you put magnets in shoes and it takes your pain away. Uh, Have you heard that before? No, I haven't. But oh. it's true. Mag magnetic energy is a healing energy. Oh. So, and it comes out through the hands. It comes out through the third eye. It comes out through the heart chakra. It can also, you've heard of a healing gaze before, have you? Some people have the gift of a healing gaze, which is that they can stare into your eyes and heal your body. I do not have that particular gift, but I know that there it's a rare gift, and there are some that have it. However... We have lived in the electromagnetic field for so long that it's now part of us and that we can use it to help heal other people because what happens is it condenses and comes out of the hand. Now, also we can use spirit and we can use intention and we can use other things to help heal. So, but that is one of the basis of the things that we can do because We've lived in this kind of atmosphere for so long. It's part of who we are. Any questions about that? Thank you. So EMFs then are not necessarily, I guess I, we always think of them as a negative. So you're saying really our exposure to EMFs, really we should actually be taking that energy and transforming well, well, it into healing. The natural, the natural form. form. Of electromagnetic mag in the earth, earth is not is harmful. It's not harmful. Right. Okay. Add to, add to it, it, it the the microwaves and the um, right. That was my question. Was is I guess how do we? Do, is that affecting us? And and should we be aware of it? Is there anything we should be doing about it? You know oh, about oh, our our exposure to that. I think I that our intending just, just healing, healing energy, energy mm -hmm. will, will, will filter out the level because, it, okay. because that is that your intention. But, but see, we're not, we're not, we not evolved, not evolved microwave, microwave, we're not evolved with, with uh, cell phone energy and all that different stuff. We've evolved with the electromagnetic field, which is natural to the Earth. So we're not using any of that other energy. We are only using that which we are evolved to use. Got Does it. that make Does sense? That make sense. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, so the, other, the stuff other stuff is not working when it comes to the healing. We're just using what we have and using what we, we were naturally, naturally given. given. 
Well, that's true. Is that how the magnets work then when we wear, they, they sell magnet bracelets and things like that where, for, you know, for healing to wear to wear around your wrists, your ankles, wherever. So is that actually taking the the, the Earth's natural electromagnetic field and, and using it? Yes, for exactly. Right. Okay, okay. But this is more, this is actually more organic in many senses because you're using intention and purity, spirit, you're using spirit along with this energy, so it actually makes it stronger. Does that make sense to you? Yes, absolutely, and the intention and the languages and the, all of it, it all, yeah, all combined. It just You'll find that, that in, in Reiki, Reiki 2, there's more symbols that add energy and add intention and add meaning and add power. As you go up the different levels of Reiki, you see the different... Uh, attunements to it, the different uh, powers that it actually uh, ignites in your system you, and makes them stronger. And the reason why it does that is because you're wanting to be a healer. Your intentions are to be a healer. If you're just an everyday third dimensional Joe, yes, you do have a healing uh, properties in your hands, but you're not intending it for any purpose. This starts putting intention on that healing energy, on the energy that is there naturally. So you're starting to attune that energy into a purpose, into a healing modality that is str gets stronger and stronger as you move up the, into the different uh, levels. Does that make sense to you? Yes, absolutely. Very good. Very good. Um, any um, more questions before I move forward? Okay. What I'm going to do is show you some of the hand positions. Of, of re did you did you get a manual with the regular hand positions in it? That's what I wanted to know if he sent you that. I haven't received anything as anybody else. I mean, he said something. Oh, I oh did I maybe I missed it. Oh, the, the electronic, electronic manual uh, uh, at the end yeah. of the class. Oh, okay, thank you. Well, uh, well, I didn't hear that. Material. I didn't hear what he said. What did What did he, he say? At the end of the class. At the end of the class, he'll give the manuals. Oh, okay. All right, so I want to show you some of the hand positions for that from the original Reiki uh, teachings. Now, what I wanted to say about these hand positions is that they are not necessary for everyone to use. These are by the book hand positions that were taught in the original Reiki one classes. Now, as you become a Reiki healer, you may you may intuitively change some of these positions, or maybe not even use some of them because you intuitively know what is going to happen with the what the patient needs and etc. But let me uh, start off by saying before I will start this class, I will find out from the client if he needs anything in particular. Do you need any part of your body worked on today? Okay. He said maybe my heart chakra, but that's not a pain or an ache or a pain, but it's still part of what Reiki can do, and I'll explain that in a little bit. The other thing that I like to do, which is not actually part of the regular Asui Reiki is that I like to put I like to prepare the teachers ahead of time the people that are uh, not teachers the healers ahead of time because sometimes you can go in and feel a little scattered before doing a, a Reiki healing session and go well you know what I, I'm not sure I, I'm ready for a Reiki to do a Reiki healing First thing I'd like you to do is put your hands together like this. Do you see that? How the fingers are touching one another? All the fingers together? 
if you hold, if you before a Reiki session will hold your hands like this, you will feel that the, it is a circuit in the body. The fingertips will, you will feel the fingertips give energy to each other. Do you feel that? Yes. And that, and that means, means whenever you can, whenever feel, you the, can feel the, the, energy the energy in the fingertips, in the fingertips that means the circuit is, is complete. complete. And, that, and means that, means that means that you are in balance. In, in your energy, energy field. field. Yes. Not your emotional field, but in your energy field. Everybody get that feeling. So, all right. The other thing I like you to do is put your hand, palms toward the sky and ask for the energy from the universe to come in. And you'll feel a heaviness in your palms. Can you feel that? When you hold in your hands like this, can you feel a sort a of sort heaviness? Of heavy come into, come your, into palms, your palms, or a little bit, or of, a little electricity, bit of electricity, or some, or some kind, kind of feeling there. Yes. there. Yes. yes, my hands are tingling. Correct. Correct. You're collecting, You're collecting energy, energy from the universe, from the universe. Because, because that's, that's what's your attention. attention. So, these, so these, two things, these two things, connecting, connecting your circuit the, and collecting energy from the universe and making sure that you are grounded does everybody know how to ground or know if they're grounded? Not always. Before you go to any Reiki, any Reiki healings, mm -hmm. make sure that you're grounded. Put your feet flat on the ground. Imagine that you are a tree and you're putting your roots down. Your roots down into the earth. And you're bringing up energy from Mother Earth, the nourishment from Mother Earth into your roots. And bring that all the way up to your heart. And then when you do, holding, the, holding your cupped hands to the universe, the branches of your tree bring that energy down to your heart as well. And so you're balanced and ready to go. You may not feel anything, but if you do that, it will balance you out in so many ways and you will be ready to do a Reiki healing. A lot of people do not prepare for Reiki healing and so some are not as successful as others. When you prepare for something, it helps it to become more successful. Do you believe, do you that? believe that? Yes. Yes, yes absolutely. And I do that, Jim. Every one of those things that you said, I've actually instinctively begun doing quite a long time ago before every channeling, before every one of my videos, before every before I do any kind of an energetic hangout. I always do everything you just said. Um, so thank you. That's wonderful. I'm happy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. And any other questions about that? And I'm going to do my next thing. <laughs> no. The next thing that I do, you see, I've been, okay, I prepared myself. So now I'm ready. I, I'm, I'm in a mindset that I'm going to heal. I'm going to be a healer and that it is important and that it is not something frivolous. It's not just something, it's not a, a throwaway activity. You're, this is serious. This is, you're going to help, you're going to help someone to, be in a better place in their body, mind, soul, and spirit. Because it's not, Reiki doesn't just heal the body. Real, Reiki is working on the spirit. It works on the emotions. And it works on your mental attitude. The first thing that it does is relax you. Why does it do that? Because when you are in a relaxed state, that is when healing is most effective. When you are in a relaxed state, healing is most effective. That's why they say sleep and rest are good when you're ill. Because when you relax, your body can heal itself in a better way. So therefore, 
Reiki, when you first do Reiki, it relaxes the mind, the body, the soul, the spirit. Mm -hmm. And so you are in a way in the first 10 minutes to start to heal. You are relaxed so that you can heal. When they're, they, That is what you're doing to your client. You're putting them in a relaxed state. Now that's why laying down, closing your eyes, and taking your shoes off are important to the first stage of Reiki because you want them to be as comfortable as possible. Make sure that your client, if, if you lay your client down and they're not comfortable, they're never going to be getting into a relaxed state. So make sure you ask your client, your patient, are you relaxed? And if they say yes, then you're ready to go. Do you need a cover? No. Ask if they need a cover. Do they need something under their knees? Yes. See, that wasn't always prepared. He needs something under his knees. Well, find something for him. One moment, please. I usually use all the pillows that are on my couch. However, we used them already. Is that better? Yes. Yeah. So, now that you have your patient relaxed, um, now, it's not necessarily, Sari, that they lay down all the time. There might not be, there are some instances where some people cannot lay down, that they're uh, experiencing maybe vertigo, or something of that nature, so they have to sit on a chair. But make sure if they have to sit up, or if they are not in a laying position, that they are relaxed. And give them anything they need, a cover, a blanket. Um, they have to be as relaxed as possible. Now, some people that are in extreme pain cannot relax as easily. Okay. My patient is escaping. <laughs> but anyway, no. Uh, sometimes you have to work on people in a sitting position. Make sure that they are as comfortable as possible. Make sure that they are hydrated before they get on the table as well. Uh, because what you're going to be doing will affect hydration in the body. Uh, I'm not sure how it works or why that happens, but after the healing also, make sure you let them know not to do exert anything um, exerting, exertive, and to drink plenty of fluids. Don't do any uh, heavy lifting or anything and drink plenty of fluids for that day. Any questions there? Okay. No. Yes. All right. Very good. The next thing I do is, uh, this is not a, an, a, a Sui Reiki practice either. However, I find that it makes so much sense. The, a spirit spoke to me about this long time ago, and it, it is a, pair, a part of Aquarian uh, fire healing Reiki, is that you... Um, balance the, the patient first before you do any healing on them. What I do is I go in a clockwise position. You can start anywhere on the body. As long as you move in a clockwise position around the body and uh, make sure their energy fields are connected. You've made sure your energy fields are connected Let's make sure their energy fields, you, and you go around the body. I mean, I didn't make much room for myself. But I go from foot to knee, knee to wrist, wrist to shoulder, or elbow to shoulder. It doesn't matter. Shoulder to shoulder. I feel the energy as I go around. I'm really doing this very fast. 
usually I spend at least a couple minutes, uh, well, not a couple minutes, but at least a half a minute on each place to make sure that the energy is flowing. If you do not feel energy flow, it does not mean that uh, it's not flowing, but I would just do this, even if you feel no energy at all, just do this so that it does start an energy flow in these areas, from these areas to these areas around the body. You may say, well, how do you know that it's working? It, the energy in your hands is um, vitalizing and charging up the places that you're touching because it can't help but do so. You do have energy in your hands. You feel that, don't you? You can feel the energy moving. So that's why I'm... Um, I can feel that, yeah. Is there a reason why you go clockwise? Yes, because uh, clockwise is how you charge. If you want to remove something from somebody, you go counterclockwise. If you want to add something to someone, you go clockwise. So that is the Asui, that's an Asui thought. So does that, so it doesn't change if you're living in a, a southern hemisphere or a northern or whatever? That's a good question. I think, I've never done Reiki in the southern hemisphere, but I think that still you would go clockwise because it means that you're adding to the this uh, this body, and when you go counterclockwise, because vortexes move in, uh, well, they do move probably differently in the southern hemisphere. So, but for the body, when you move clockwise, it's positively, uh, it's working positively for the system because that's the way the blood's flowing and that's the way the energy fields are. They're they're in clockwise in every human, I believe. Right, right, okay. Thank you. I agree, I agree it's um, universal and it's not only for Reiki. There is a lot of evidence that uh, it's asymmetrical that, you know, even intuitively try otherwise, you will see it, it doesn't flow as well. Yes. Right. If you want to, if someone needs uh, energy removed, then you would go clockwise, uh, counterclockwise. But to put energy in and to bring the flow into the into a, a nice pattern, you go clockwise. So now we have we have uh, helped his energy flow. What does that do? Since his energy flow now is going better and going in a positive direction, and, and sometimes when you do go around and do this uh, energy flow. It removes energy blockages. It removes energy blockages. So that, that would detract from healing. So now you have a body that's ready to, to be healed. Ready. Or, ready. He's ready. Um, so <laughs> when you do that, it, it creates a better energy flow for your energy to heal better. Does that make sense to you? Yes, completely. All right. Now let's do some of the hand positions. And I'm going to do a few, uh, do the upper body hand positions because there's, there's hand positions that go all over the body. Uh, in, but I don't think they're in the manual. But your teachers usually know them all. I know them all, but it's not necessarily, the, uh, you'll have a good idea of what I'm, doing by the, by the time I get through about five of them. So, um, I washed my hands also before Reiki. So they're in smell nice and and because <laughs> so, you're going to have to put your, if you do a Sui Reiki exactly like it, they have it in the book, you're going to have to put your hands on their face, over their face, and if you have dirty hands, that'll probably not be very nice. <laughs> And barely Jeremy. <laughs> All right. Can you see my hands? Yes. 
the left hand should be on top. Why? Because uh, Reiki is feminine, and it's also the feminine side of the body is the heart side, which is the left side. Asui Reiki is actually a feminine energy. Is that right, uh, Max? I believe it is. I agree. Yes. And if you're doing Joe, is it uh, Jigong or Joe Ray? Which one is the masculine? Joe Ray is the masculine portion. The masculine does not touch the body. The feminine can touch the body. It doesn't have to, but it can. And before you even start touching the body, you ask permission. May I touch? Please. He said, please. So some people will say, oh, no, I don't want you to touch me. So in that, if they t do not want you to touch them, then you will have to do the motions over their body, which would be upside down from where I'm going to do them. But you will see what I mean. The first position is under the head in the back of the neck. Sort of. Your hand position will be like this. And some people have long hair and you don't want to hurt them in any way to get your hands back there. So you move their head to the side. Yes, they can move their hair out of the way, but you move their head to the side a little before you put your hand under there. You see that? And then you will move the head back and move this hand under here. So now your hands are in that position under the head, touching the base of the neck. And you leave it there for a little while. Why? You want the energy to perform in that area. This will help thought processes, this will help headaches, this will help neck aches, this will help um, all kinds of things that are related oops, to the head and the top, uh, top of the spine and neck. So can you feel the energy? Very much. Very much. The energy is going in, it's, the circuit is connected, his body is balanced out so that the healing energy can move in a greater way. Anybody have any questions? He said that's powerful. Jim, okay. um, are you are your hands still the same position uh, as you were showing before? Your left hand over the right hand as you are. Oh, you have the right hand in front. Um, that where your hands are, are they in the same position as you were explaining before? Um, yeah. Okay. Left over right. Left is always dominant in Asui Reiki. And why is that? Because of the heart, because it's a female energy, and the female side is the left side. The, I, masculine, I, the masculine side is the right side. So in Reiki, Asui Reiki, the left hand is dominant. Are your hands touching? They are touching. Moment. They are overlapping, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Just like I was showing you on the screen, the left is on top over the right. And they're behind the back of the neck and the head and the fingertips are right at the base of the spine or at base of the, the skull and the hands are on just above the ears on the back. Like a yes, cupping motion he's saying. It is a cupping motion. Yes. Can you ask David how it feels, like how he feels oh, the energy? 
it feels it feels like everything is pulling directly towards that emotion or towards that part of my body. He said it feels like the energy is pulling towards that part of his body, which means the energy is uh, affecting that area. Wow. Anything else? Yeah, I can, it's almost as if I feel things clearing away. He feels things clearing away back, back there in the back of his head. Now, see, uh, to do this right, I, I have to stay here for a, a few minutes. And I don't want to to uh, really skimp on your treatment, so. I'm paying good money for this. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So, but he is getting a lot of energy there, and it is helping. And I can feel the heat going in there as well, which is also a healing modality, a healing energy. I, especially at the base of the spine, I feel a lot of energy there. He said it's amazing. There's a lot of energy going into the base of the spine, uh, base of the uh, base of the skull, not the spine. Do you Any more questions? And then I'll go to position two. Do you yourself feel any like other than heat? Yes, I feel a throbbing in the, my fingers and I feel a, a throbbing in my hands. There are 32 different kinds of energy. 26 of them are positive, and the other ones are negative. However, uh, at least that's what we know of here on Earth, is 20, uh, 26 different, 32 kinds of energy, or 26 are good. Thank you. I know of about nine of them. There's prickly, there's the prickly, there's the tingly, there's the itchy, there's the wave, there's uh, there's the heat. There's many kinds of energies that go in with healing, and they do different things. It, or they do the same thing in different ways, depending on the needs of the, the patient. Now, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to ask, do you uh, stay in your first position uh, for a a certain amount of time or until you feel the energy decreasing is what I do. Fabulous question and it is the second part. When you feel the energy start to wane a little bit then you move to the next position which means that the energy has done enough work at this point. That does not mean the energy stops working at that particular spot. It just means that it is there's enough energy there that you can move to the next position. You see, and that's why another. I'm so glad you asked that. It's very important. If you and if you don't feel the energy, then I would wait a certain amount of time. I would wait at least two minutes on each of these positions. Hmm? Thank you. Hmm? The next position. He is, it is starting to wane. You would do the same thing if somebody had long hair, move the head to the side to take the hands out so that they are not, that you're not pulling their hair out and things of this nature. Be as considerate as possible. You want them to remain comfortable. Comfort is a beautiful and wonderful thing because the more comfortable they are, the better the healing because they will if they're not comfortable, they won't get into that relaxed state, which is the first thing that Reiki does. The next position is the hands on each side of the head. You see, I have my hands flat out like this, and they go on each side of the head. You can put them down over the, the ears a little bit. It should come down to the bottom of the cheek. Your thumbs should be at the corner of the eyes, not poking the eyes, but at the very corners of the eyes right here, where you would, um, is that comfortable for you? And you can ask them if they're comfortable with your hand positions, because sometimes you might be in a position that's not comfortable for the patient, and therefore have to adjust your hands a little bit. But this 
Now see this particular position also helps the brain, also helps the head, but it also helps with emotions. Some people are very, I've noticed when I use this hand position, it makes me intuitive sometimes, which means that I start telling them something about their life. That doesn't happen with everybody, but I just have this little psychic thing with some people that when I touch their heads, I go, oh, you've had a busy week. You did this, 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 and that. And they're going, what? How do you know that? It just comes to me. I, it just, that just happens. I don't know why. But it helps because you're letting them know that this is helping to rest and relax those thoughts. You're healing that anxiety or whatever it is that was involved in that particular situation or that particular day that I was mentioning. Has anybody experienced that before? Interesting. Well, it, it may happen, it may not, but I just wanted to add that because just something that happens with me sometimes. I know Max has been there when it's happened at Reiki Share, so. The next position is over the face. It's over the eyes. It's, and, and this is the one you really have to be careful of because you don't want them to, you don't want to poke them in the eyes. You sort of just touch at the forehead and hold your fingers out and touch fingers, but you don't, uh, like, maybe you can touch the nose a little bit, but you're actually putting your hands sort of out like that so that you're not suffocating them or smothering them in any way. But this helps with the eyes, the third eye. And stimulation of brain processes, especially in the especially the frontal lobe. Do you see where the hands are there? Can everybody see that? Yes. Not that you did before, but now yeah. you look super good. Right. <laughs> it's not overlapping. It really good. It feels really good. You can feel the heat. Heat is a, also a healing modality. Making him sing, not in, not usually what my customers do, but that's okay. So you hold this here. The thumbs are touching. The thumbs are together. I want to come and show this this position to you a little closer, because this is how you're holding your hands for this over the face. Do you see that? Can you hold them a little higher? Okay. How's that? And if you want, you can put the left, the left, put the left finger the left over the finger right finger. finger. But usually I just touch them. It's I get the same amount of energy either way. All right? The next area is does have to overlap, and that is under the chin, by the neck. You'll be your wrists will just be touching the sides of the cheek and the left fingers will be over the right and this is for the throat chakra it's like this here I'll come close you won't be able to wrap around your fingers a lot but you will be able to uh, put them in a position so that the left is over the right and this and you will be touching the cheeks and sending and Energy from the palm into the throat area. Why is it left over right as opposed to the other position where it was the left being the dominant? The left over right, it's always left over right for a sui reiki because a sui reiki is the feminine form and the left side of the body is feminine side. Any other questions, sir? I feel some energy going in into the throat chakra, so that's, I'm staying, going to stay here for a little while, 
Is there any questions? You're just covering uh, your patient's chin, is that right? Right. I'm about this far away from his chin, actually. I'm about this far away. Hmm. So you're not touching his chin? No, I'm not touching his chin at all. Oh, I see. I'm actually putting a, like a little cage around this chin and touching the cheeks with my with this part of the hand. Oh, I see. That's a very good question. Thank you for asking that. Thank because you. you're right, you really can't see that from this angle on that on the screen. And my eyes aren't that good to be able to notice that. Is everyone? Yeah, in terms of energy, uh, what's going on with your hands and, and the patient? What's the... It's sending energy to the throat and the throat chakra um, because this is an important part of the, the body. It's going to help with improving communications. It's going to... Yes, if somebody's going to be a channeler, it might help with that. It's also healing anything that might be wrong in the um, glandular areas down here in the neck. Pituitary, I think that's here, and the um, and and uh, the places where you would get um, goiters. What was that called? Thyroid. Thyroid, yes. There's good energy going in there. Very good energy entering his neck and um, throat area. So that's what this position is about. The next one is about the heart. Hold on, I'm going to stay here one more minute. And how do how do you recognize that that area needs more work? How do I recognize what? That the area needs more work. Well, because I'm feeling a tingling in my hands. Not everybody will feel that, but I am feeling a tingling that energy is going in there. So I wait till the energy stops going in very strong and then I move. Because it is going from my fingertips to the throat and from the palms to the neck. I do some breathing exercises just to strengthen the, the flow of energy that's coming from me. If you blow air out of your body, it seems to add energy to your hands. I'm not sure why, it just does. The next position will be this. The left hand over the right hand in this position over the heart. Make sure you're in the heart area. It, I, you can't even see that on this screen. But my hands are like this. And they are on the heart area. And the, the left thumb is over the right thumb on the top. The right hand fingers are over the left. The left fingers are over the right fingers on the top there. Left over right. And are you touching the patient? Yes, I'm. I'm actually making contact with the heart area. Ah, thank you for reminding me. For the if you are a man or a woman working on a woman. Sometimes this can be a touchy area for, for obvious reasons. So you might want to have the woman, the lady, the beautiful subject, put her hands over her breasts mm -hmm. so that you're not actually touching them or not interfering with that area at all. 
it's just a nice, it just makes some women feel a little more comfortable knowing that you're honorable in your intent. Does that make sense? Yes, that's actually a great idea to make them feel more comfortable if they're not comfortable. Yes, yeah, so they yeah, come, so they come, come a, little a little bit. Yes. And you can put your hand still on the heart area. The, the, finger, the fingertips will go over the heart. Somebody else is trying to call me. Whoever Stephanie is. <laughs> All right, I do feel energy going into the heart area. Yes, for men, you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, especially if you know them well, they probably trust you and everything, but... Um, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> You don't want to. You don't want to put your hands on a woman in that area, without asking. You know them to cover up. The next position is here. The hands on the sides of the arms, at the at the very top part of the arms. You put them flat out on the top parts of the arms like this. What this is doing is putting energy into the arms, the shoulders, because you might want to even put your, your palms right on the shoulders and let the fingers hang down over the sides. Depending on if this person would have had shoulder pain, I might want to uh, uh, be as close you know, on the shoulders as much as possible. But... This is just the the Asui Reiki position for this. If I were to do my normal Reiki routine on a bad shoulder or a shoulder that was in pain, I would I would do it differently. But these I'm going to show you the actual hand positions of the Asui Reiki. Then we'll go into the modified versions later. I don't feel much energy going in on here because his arms are in good shape. I do feel a little energy going into the shoulders. There may be a little stress there. You will be able to feel sometimes stress. You will say, are you feeling pains on your shoulders? And they may say no, but you're still feeling a lot of energy. It may be stress because people hold stress on their shoulders a lot and in the stomach area. They hold stress in the stomach, and they hold stress on the shoulders. So just to, an FYI, stress can be felt on the shoulders and in the stomach. Even though they may not be feeling any pain, they may be feeling stress. Women especially feel uh, a lot of stress in the stomach area. They do on their shoulders as well. Men carry it on their shoulders more. And women carry it more in their stomach region. This position can go down the arms as far as you like it to. You can get, come down the arms, and the rest of the body is side to side. You have side beside the stomach on the sides on the sides of the hip on the sides of the legs, on the sides of, the, you know, at the knees, if you want to cover the knees with Reiki. So you can go all the way down the body and just it's, it's actually symmetrical at this point. All right? Because the ones at the top were a little different, so I wanted to show you them. But the rest of these down the sides are just on the sides the way they would, and you can go even to the feet and do um, just something like this on the feet. I don't think there is an Asui position for the feet, but I do I do, uh, do the toes. Some pre you ask them, though, if their toes are sore, because sometimes, I know his aren't, but sometimes 
they have sore toes, so you might want to ask them before you just latch onto their feet. So, And some people do not want you to touch their feet. They'll have you touch everywhere on their body but their feet because some people have very sensitive feet or painful feet or whatever. So if there is any doubt about the comfort of your client or patient, please be considerate and ask them if there's any doubt in your mind. Is there any questions to this point? I think this is a good... Go. Go. Somebody unmuted. Somebody unmuted. No, I just said no. That was excellent. Everything was excellent. Um, yeah, I, I, everything was really clear to me. Thank you. Okay, very okay, good. Okay, very good. Every, anybody else have a question? It's all right. Uh, let's take a break here. This will be a good moment for a break. And um, we'll come back and we'll continue with some other things. <clears throat> <clears throat> some other positions, hand positions, and a couple symbols. All right. Give it uh, um, 10 minutes. Give it 10 minutes. Give it 10 minutes. Oh, actually, oh, actually, we have a, we have a, a hey, lot of time. A little Can less. We, well, it's one, it's uh, one, two, uh, three. Uh, it's one, two, three, my time right now. <laughs> one, two, three. Okay. Okay. Let, yeah, yeah, five, five minutes. minutes. Okay. Because he wants me to do some channeling, and I still have a lot of material. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll have to cover that uh, next. We need an attunement. Oh, um, uh, Max says we need an attunement. Okay, yes, so I might have to finish my material next week. Something of that sort. Because people need to go home, students need to go home and practice already with an attunement. They have okay. To have before going home. Yeah, because I have still a lot of material left. Absolutely. Well, we can do more next week. All right. Thank you. You did get a lot of energy. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. No, see. Alright, you're excused for five minutes. Mm -hmm. And um, I can feel a lot of energy going to you. Your throat took a lot of energy in. I wonder if that's necessary. You took lots. Sure.
I'm back. Ничего не делать. Совсем что-то хвата. Ого. Но хочу. Нет, я не хочу. Okay. Is the five minutes up? I think so. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. I think we're all back. Okay. All right. Hold on one second. I have to get situated. I'm going to have to move you back. Okay. So I can get a chair. Are you guys hydrated? Yeah. What'd you say? Jim, what language was that? I don't know. No. I was speaking with you. I was all of a sudden I started speaking languages, and then you. It was really funny. <laughs> they wanted to do something with him, so that was what that was. Don't know what they were doing exactly, but they were clearing a passage. They were clearing a passage, he said, which makes sense to me. Okay. Were you kind of channeling? I was channeling some healing, mm -hmm. but that's not something I usually do. <laughs> but it is something that you can do if they are open to it. Now if you have regular Reiki customers, clients, patients that know nothing about channeling, I wouldn't advise it. <laughs> All right. Max, are you there? Uh, maybe he had to go worse than I thought. <laughs> I would like to hear his people to be there as well. Yeah, we should wait a minute. Hey, yeah, Jim, I, have a, I have a quick question about the symbols. The what? The symbols. The symbols. Yes. So, you know, um, Reiki was uh, conceived many years ago when the energies on the planet were significantly different. Yes. And I'm wondering, with the changed energies that we have now, um, are the symbols adaptive to that, or do they periodically get upgraded? How does that work? The symbols are universal. However, the energy of the Earth has changed, and some of the symbols that are coming out now from the galaxy 
are going to be more powerful in the future or, or in, in the now and moving forward. However, the old Reiki symbols still have power. They have not lost that because they come from the universe and they come from uh, the galaxy as well. So they will have they will have definite energies, and with your uh, with your intentions, they can have even more energy than they. The more intention you have, the better it is. So um, there are new symbols that are, will be revealed, and one of them will be revealed next week because I didn't have time to do it this week. It will be the Ruch, which is an energy blocking symbol. If somebody's on the table that is very negative, if it is very giving off a, a bad energy, you can actually block it with this symbol and not be a, a, and move forward. You don't have to stop doing Reiki on them. That's the beauty of it. Before, if you felt that kind of negativity coming towards you from a person, you would probably have to stop and say, "Sorry, I can't. It's affecting my work." But um, that's not always a polite thing to say, but um, sometimes it was necessary because people were giving off such negative vibrations. So the Rook will block anything coming back at you or things that are coming from a negative area and you can block them and continue your work and be able to still heal them and work on the healing modality with them. So there are some new symbols that do new things. Now the old symbols have specific meanings as well. You're going to find that the new symbols do different things. So the old symbols are not necessarily obsolete, but uh, may enhance some of the new symbols. And the dichomios are all always powerful. I think they're they're um, when you reach a, a level three. Act a uh, level three understanding of Reiki. The Dicomio symbols are still very, very powerful, and I use them every day still. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, Max. Are you wanting to me to call a particular person in for an attunement? Uh, no, thank you. Whatever, whoever comes. I like Archangels, but whoever comes. Uh, All right. Who's... Very good. Mikao uh, Usui was wonderful, too. Who? Uh, the founder of Reiki, Mikao Usui. Ah, he was, yes, he came before. He didn't do an attunement, though. Not yet. But he did explain how he discovered, I think, at Reiki. He gave us a, a, a general, general. To all at once. That was powerful. I wow, that was really powerful. I remember that. I was there. So um, I don't know who will come. I don't know what they're going to say. The Reiki attunement is not necessary until next week, but somebody will come and give some kind of blessing or something now. So, is every any everyone satisfied with what they've learned so far? Uh, Jim. Um we need some sort of initiation now so people have that to practice. All right. It can be all at once. You don't have to do one by one. Okay. Well, I will find out what they want to do when I call them. So <laughs> when they come, they'll tell they'll tell us. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. One moment and I if there's no more questions or comments, All right, I will uh, do a little meditation, and uh, we'll see who comes. Thank I invite you. whoever has the best information and has the best uh, thought process for this particular moment, for this particular situation, and for these particular people. Much love. Can you do the little chanting? No, no, chanting. Go ahead and chant, and I will do a meditation. Okay. Huh? Go ahead. I, uh, 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 u
Yanneha Yanneha Ranaya Yanneha Maha Yanahaya Mahara Hayya Mahakaya Sayanaha Maha Yanaha Greetings. Hello. I'm Yurio. Welcome, thank you. I understand that you are teaching healing modalities today. Absolutely. This is a good time for me to come, for I am one who is in favor of these things. Not that any angel is not, but I am one that brings energy to them. One moment, please. First, a blessing. May the light that comes to you be part of your healing. May you be creative with the God part of your soul so that you may create fresh newness where once there was old worn out parts. Fresh entities where there was old entities. Newness where there was not. Build and create health where there was no health. Put love and positive energy where there was not positive energy. Instill hope where there was no hope. Find goodness where even they cannot find it within themselves. But it does exist. Build a positive relationship even though they may not be a positive relation use all that you have in love for positivity for enhancement of those things that are good do not set aside any of your talents to make one greater than the other if they are all to be used. Find a way to build a world where love blocks out negativity, confusion, hate and fear. Sorrow is always there and sometimes is a necessity to find that which we can build joy on. 
Do not hate anyone or anything, no matter what they have done or no matter what it represents, because there is part of that thing in you as well, and that would be giving yourself negativity. Find that which is positive and healing and good and bring that to light so that it may shine and block out that which is not. I give you each a solemn blessing that this is a way of enlightenment. This is a way of betterment. This is a way of forward movement for all of mankind and for your attachment one to another. Feel the immensity of God and his love for you at this time. Feel his blessing that is overwhelming and overpowered all that which is normal in your eyes. Let it be of a great encouragement, excitement, and inspiration to you all. I now give each of you energy which you did not have before. Why? because you have earned it by listening and wanting to learn that which is greater than yourselves, that which is greater than average, that which is pushing forward into a new light. Bless you and encourage you and strengthen you where there was no strength before, let your muscles feel it. Let your mind feel it. Let your emotions feel the strength of character that is here with you now. Be overwhelmed if you wish, but do not forget to be thankful for it. I give you much love and ignite a fire in you for giving to others anything that is right to give at that time because that is a blessing that will come back a hundredfold plus it is a blessing to others. All those blessings that you give will not be overlooked and not be in vain, but give them out of love, not seeking the blessing in return, but seeking the smile and the blessing in the other. Be pure of heart, be pure of spirit, and let me light your way, whatever you need, a glimpse of the light. And to you a great Amen, and so be it. May the heavenly hosts all fall with you upon this great land. May you all know that this is not in vain, and that your lives are meaningful and have purpose. Exhilarate, excite, ignite, refresh. Refresh your spirit. Amen. And now, the energy that comes from only one Mother, Father, God, and all the energies that is creation. 
be upon you now. Speak, if you will. If you are guided, your words will be heard. Please allow health and thought to come with me when I work on my friend next Friday with a brain tumor. That is my intention. Go with power and confidence. Go with the light in your soul that creates health where there is not health. Create a place of light where there may be some darkness. And remove that which does not belong. Thank you. Thank you. Please help me to carry on with my mission. Your mission is coming and is appropriate. And all the things that you wish from this life will be happening. Do not doubt anything. Be of good cheer and know that the Spirit is with you. Move forward. I would like to, help, uh, to thank you for uh, the blessing and invite healing to our teacher, Barbara Carlton, who just had an operation. She will be well. No cancer will return. Thank you much. It is promised. Mm. Thank you. I, Thank um, you. I am overwhelmed by love of your message. I am in such gratitude. Thank you. Thank you for your heart. For it is pure in its want to help the world. Go and be powerful. Light up a place for yourself and for many. And it will happen that you will be blessed many times over. And so will those that are in your presence. I want to thank you, Uriel, for all of your guidance, healing, and help, especially over the last year, and for guiding me so, so deeply. I love you. I love you as well, and let your heart be full to overflowing so that all those around you will feel the love that you have and the love that is still to come, for you are to be blessed beyond what you can imagine. Uriel, I just want to thank you. Um, I think you saved my life in the past. Uh, you held my hands and you took me to the light. For that, I thank you. The life within you is valuable and could not be left to die. Rise up. Be who you are in the creative God that is within you. Will be a light to the world in many ways. Do not reject any of your talents or any of the things that are coming from you. Know that you are in the right and in the light. I love you. Much. Hi. It is much pleasure to meet you, Uriel. And I wish to send you love and light. And I wish to my attention to ask for your assistance in my transitional time at this point. And to give and ask for strength to carry forth with my mission, whatever it may be. Strength and courage is yours, also light and love. Your heart is beautiful and full of warmth and radiance. Be well. Go forth. Do not be afraid. All the things that you need and want will be given unto you in due time. You are blessed of God, and he is with you always.
If there is no more to be said, let me say a final thing. I feel you all. You are precious to God. You will flourish. If you want prosperity, claim it. If you want healing modality and energy and power, claim it. If you want to see the world as a better place, claim it. There are many things that are not of goodness that come to your world and to many other worlds and to all places. But you must stay in the light to be able to understand and appreciate who God is. And he will bless you and know you for who you are because he is within you in a way that he is not with anyone else. Be well, be of the light, and let it bless you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is there another chat? Thank you. And microphone to the microphone and chat. Hello. Oh. I'm back. Hello. Would you like another chunk? Wow. Uh, would I like what? I like what? Ah. Other chunk, chunk, chunk. Thank you. Needed that. Would I like another chump? Chance. chance. Oh, chance for what? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want it. <laughs> Chanting music. Oh, oh yes, chant. Yes. Please. Sorry for my Russian. <laughs> yes, do another chant. That's wonderful. <laughs> okay, let me see. That would be a great way to close the program for today, I think. Wonderful. Hi, <sighs> Oh, 
Thank you. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Thank you. Much love to everybody. I hope you had a good day today. And we Thank will see you next time. Wow, same Jim. Same that channel. was awesome. Thank you very Thank much. You guys, this was so amazing. I can't even tell you. I'm just breathless. Thank you. Breaking <laughs> uh, uh, one eye going to be next week. Next week, same time, same place. Same bad time, same bad channel. You guys want to do the same time at then again, uh, ten, or, you know, earlier? Whatever it uh, is. 11 Eastern time. Okay, 11 Eastern. Okay, great. All right. Yeah, that way I'll be able to do my Reiki afterwards. <laughs> I have a, a regular Reiki customer at 330. <laughs> All right. Bye. See you next week. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Much love, everybody. everybody. Thank you. Much love. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs>